In the meantime, let's roll with what we've got. And it's only me. Oh, no, the marketer. Just kidding. Uh, Sue was not here. Christina Crowley said that Sue was here earlier. Uh, she was not. That was me logged in as a pseudonym. And I changed my name quickly because I log in under her account, Christina. <laughs> so we have been away for a couple of times. Christina's like, oh, it's you. Where's Sue? Bring back Sue. <laughs> okay, as people start to come in, let's make sure that I have a sound check. Give me a one if you can hear me. I know Christina. Christina says, no, I appreciate you. Really, I do. Just kidding. <laughs> so we've just come back from the live event. And I don't know if you can see my screen. If you can, you're probably seeing the wrong one. Okay. All right. So this is very likely going to be a bit weird since I expected three other members to be covering me. So I'm here out of courtesy. So that leaves you with things that I can answer. Let me see what kind of questions came up. I don't even have the question sheet up. Okay. Somebody said upon coming in that they were looking for Jimmy Kelly for consulting. Uh, one of the things that you might want to do if you want to consult with Jimmy Kelly is go to jimmykelly.org, I believe. That his op, his uh, time purchase thing is there, and I think it's a thousand dollars an hour. I'm not sure what it is right now. There might be some kind of OMG discount, but I'm not really sure. Also, it might have been removed because he's so busy at this time. You can also use our help desk if that's not helpful. Okay. So we have been at our live Network Empire event, and we're just recovering. I slept for two days straight after that event. And, wow, it was just incredible. Let me see what we got here. Larry is, I'm just going to start reading questions off the screen until my team arrives. Andres, you're asking me, I am a newbie at OMG. My question pertains to whether I should use vSilo or Video Kraken with your PBNs, not which not sure which plugin to use when. Well, one thing I would say is that uh, PBNs or private blog networks and private blogs is not our forte. We really don't talk too much about it, but I believe Greg covered it, how to use Video Kraken. You can use Video Kraken on a PBN on low to keep content moving through it, and you don't want to have a ton of videos auto-publishing. You can also use Video Silo on a PBN, but I would recommend that you stick with Greg's recommendations on how to silo a PBN. It's not something that I know a lot about because it's just not something that we focus on. It's completely fine to use that in certain circumstances, uh, and it's fine. You just follow the methods taught in OMG, and Video Kraken is fine to use on that as well. Okay, let me see. Larry is asking, I made a couple of mistakes in creating a menu with any silo builder. Is there any way to, this is a help desk question, Larry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop the help desk uh, link in the tab. And it's also not a question that I can answer. Uh, is there a way to delete the menu items or is there a way to reset the silo builder? Okay. There is not a way. Let me just do the best I can answer this, Larry. And if it doesn't help you, then just get the help desk link and go ahead and ask and one of us will an answer that personally. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give you that link right there next to your question. We try to get back. Now we are recovering from our live event. We try to get back within two days. Generally 24 hours is our maximum, but we're a little bit swamped right now. So we're kind of digging out of the help desk. Um, what you need to do is you can, if you made a mistake, you're going to want to delete the items. Let me see if I can find a demo site where I know that's contained. Okay. 
Okay, and while I'm getting Larry's question answered, Paul is saying, is anything happening on Skype? Seem to recall you mentioned something on an earlier Director's Cut. Yeah, Paul, we do have a Director's Cut Network Empire hybrid Skype group. All you have to do is ping me on Skype, and I'll add you to that group. Okay. Let's go ahead and see if I can log in and answer Larry's question here. Okay. So in order to delete something, just so you know the way that this, the Silo Builder plugin works, and it's going to be pretty much the same with the new one, I don't think we've fixed that, is you've got to go into, let me just see here, here's vSilo. So you're talking about you import it, Larry's talking about how he imported it on from the DWS any silo builder software okay and what that really ha what happens with that is that if you let me just show you what it looks like on the map if you import that and you want to delete these you actually have to blow away the page let me show you this Larry let me go to okay and also you have to blow away the categories so that's the one thing if I delete one of these categories Larry it's gonna blow that silo away because the way that we use it, we use WordPress's own um, category function. Okay, we use we have to stick with the structure of WordPress in order to silo WordPress, and it's kind of inconvenient. So that's the coding. <clears throat> it's pretty. It's actually fairly intense coding. So if you want to, let's say I wanted to de delete Deep Silo plugin, I would have to delete that and empty it from the garbage. We currently do not have an easy way to do this just yet, Larry. And I know we have a lot of people wanting that. And then you also got to delete the page. And what you'll see is that that will delete that uh, from the silo. You'll also see it. If you want to get rid of it in the menu, of course, there's cosmetic, there's cosmetic aspects of the menu as well. So you, as you guys know, the DWS Any Silo Builder plugins, the primary Any Silo plugin menu has to be there. Okay? But that's just cosmetic. So you really need to go ahead and get that, those pages. Does that make sense, Larry? Are you still here? Okay, and if for some reason you don't have it figured out, go ahead and, and hit our help desk. That's where we, we there is a support queue, uh, but that should blow things away. Now, if you messed up a ton of your silos and you just want to start over, probably you should just go ahead and blow everything away. But again, be careful with that. Just delete the categories and the, and the main pages. Andreas is asking, does Video Kraken also build silos? Great question. Uh, Andreas, the current plugin that we've got, this is the legacy one that I had designed. Uh, still for sale on this, one of our old legacy sites here. The current version, and this is not going to be true for much longer. I don't have an exact day. We're just kind of getting regrouped, but most of it is done. The upcoming version, if you just want to wait for a minute, will be for sale here. And that one does silo, yes. And it's going, what it does is it utilizes a hybrid of, let me just go back here. This, we're still putting up the sales page. You can see that we have three different kinds of plugins. We have simple, deep, and video. These are the ones that are about to be released, okay? And simple silo plugin is kind of interesting because it just has one page and then a a post, a second level uses post. Can everybody see that? Okay. So this is a little bit different than what the other plugins did. My original video silo plugin is, is quite different than this. And this came out of popular demand. There are some instances when you want to use just a simple page, like in video silo plugin and uh, free silo plugin, this is the legacy versions that are still out there, these two things would be pages. Whenever you see these Roman numerals, it means we're using a post. It's just the way that we've indicated the difference between a post and a page. Okay? And so the simple silo 
plugin works in tandem with the new Video Kraken coming out, Video Kraken 4.0. And it is really just amazing what it does. I'm trying to see if there's like a sample site that I don't care about that I can show you guys what that looks like. Yeah, here we go. And it's quite new, Larry. Um, was it Larry or was it Andres? Oh, Andres, yeah. Here's a, just a complete test, test site that I flatten every week or so because I use it for demos. Okay, you can see it's on the, the semantic theme. This is the theme that Kevin created. And you can see here that this is actually the silo plugin. And what's interesting about this is since it integrates with Simple, See each one of these, these long sidebar links? These are all just posts. So I would call that semi-siloing, and it's really quite effective. Now, this isn't really ranked for anything just yet, but you know it does have like 10,000 videos on it already since I started importing things before I left for the event. Okay, so that's the difference between the new model, let's go back to the home page. Again, this is poorly implemented, poorly designed. This is something I set up in five minutes. You can see this is the front page. I got some errors down here because we were doing some testing. But you can see if I click on that, as each post comes through, depending upon what you set your time to on the Video Kraken plugin, if I have it set for one day, one video every hour or one video every day, then it's just going to add videos under that category and silo them. So this is actually the silo function right here because you're on the page. See how the, see how the, cat, the uh, silo is water, the great culling? Okay, so any, depending upon how many links I have set to this page, that's how many siloed posts will be on the page. Let's look at Nikola Tesla here. Okay, you can see Nikola Tesla is the, can you guys see that? Give me a one if you can see up here. Can you see the, um, okay, good. So if I click on this, that runs on water, the full documentary. Okay, that one I remember, that was an error. We were doing a bugging. Let me see if we got this fixed. Hang on a second. Nope, we did not get that fixed. Broken silo. <laughs> you guys are looking at a prototype. Hang on. You look at it runs on water. Put my foot in mouth. There we go. Okay, so we're in the category it runs on water. That other category we were coding with. Somebody's saying a Zoom would help. Okay. A little bit better. <clears throat> Excuse me. Still recovering from this event. Everybody wanted to stay up until 4 in the morning at this Theme Zoom certification live. Okay, good. So you can see the it runs on water. And then you can see that the name of the article that was just pulled through YouTube, I'm not spinning headlines or titles or anything like that. So this came out as Stanley Meyer Runs on Water 1995. Okay, so you got the whole thing. But it is siloed, so you're automatically siloing this site. Let's go see. The subject matter is kind of random, but let's go ahead and see if we can find. Let me see if I can find another site as a better example. Here's a test site. You can see that the banner is not even properly made. But you can see, like, here's the silo SEO facts. Okay. And I have quite a few. You can do, you see that I do have the banner on here, and I am testing that banner with a UTM code and so on and so forth. So if you see up here, SEO facts, I know it might be a little bit difficult for you to see. But these will all be siloed posts using Simple Silo Builder. So obviously, SEO facts. SEO myth facts. Now, I've had some good questions. Is this kind of over-optimizing for SEO? Well, a little bit. But you've got to understand the purpose of the PinVid site <clears throat> within the network empire model is to create a ton of traffic. Okay, so you're not looking for perfect optimization within the Jimmy Kelly model of optimization. One of the talks that Jimmy gave this week was on-page and off-page optimization on skeleton keys. In other words, the the model to try to get your to make absolute sure that you do not optim that you do not over optimize, and it's very common to over optimize because you really only you really only want the core target keyword in 
lot of the times that's two keywords, uh, two times or less. And you just have to be careful with all that. So although this might be optimizing, over-optimizing for the word SEO, you don't really sweat it when you're kind of nuking something from orbit, which is really what a pin vid does. I think I publish like a thousand videos per week minimum on these types of sites. And you only want to do that when you have a lot of hosting, okay, when you have a lot of bandwidth. This is sitting on our own server or something that's infinitely scalable like that. Does that make sense? So since I'm the only one here, you guys will have to stay in the target of things that I'm able to answer. If you want to ask me about domain authority stacking on the four, in the fourth dimension, flipping over to the fifth dimension, and should I turn myself into a pretzel when optimizing the third keyword in the fourth sentence through Facebook, I'm probably not going to be able to answer you that precisely. But I will be able to answer how to make a lot of money and generate a lot of traffic on the Internet if you want me to help you with that. I can. <laughs> we can talk about domain authority stacking a bit. That's a topic we should probably wait until the rest of the team is on. Um, Paula is asking, <clears throat> what is a UTM code? Paula, I'm going to go ahead and show you that. UTM. UTM is, you know, that's kind of embarrassing. What is U Anybody know what UTM stands for? Tracking something, tracking modality, it's an acronym. Paula, just, you can type in UTM code Google. And you'll see the URL builder right here, the URL builder. And I'll go ahead and drop that in there for you, Paula. I'll drop it in there for everybody. Let me see. You guys are so awesome for being patient with me. We have like 80 people in the room. <laughs> and I'm the only one probably who's awake yet. So I have somebody trying to hunt down the rest of the team. It's probably they're probably asleep still. Uh, yes, Paula, that's a great question. Paula's asking, what do I use to track this stuff? Well, I actually use UTM. Uh, I have no problem using UTM code. And let's see here. Thanks, David. David did a Google Unified Threat Management. No, that's <laughs> not it, David. That's a different UTM. <laughs> that's funny. He's got me curious though. <laughs> All right. Actually, this is a good lesson here. Hold him the tracking machine, David. If Kevin were here, he would tell you that this Wikipedia markup is important and to ignore. Anything that's a definition, they'll pull in. There's multiple acronyms for UTM. So ultimate unified threat management is not one of them. But that's kind of cool. Anyway, a squirrel. Okay, so Paula, there's several things that we use. Uh, we use... I feel 100% comfortable using the UTM builder, especially for pin vids, but we also have our own technology coming called the Perpetual Keyword Money Machine, something we've been building for 10 years. Uh, you guys will be among the first to hear about it, and I'm really excited about it because really you have to track everything on your network. So if I have a network of sites and I want to keep track of everything. I want to keep track of the relationship of how the traffic comes through. So if I get a piece of traffic from the way out here and the outer darkness or something a long way, a bunch of hops away from my main site and I still own it, again, this is kind of like domain authority stacking, right? If I have a social, if I have a social site or even a blog way out here in the middle of nowhere that is branded, I mean that is unbranded, and I get traffic through that. Let's say it's just like an automated blog or something like that. Like a, a drug, this is a drudge theme right here. If I get a click on one of these things, and it does happen, you know, even on sites that you just have out there, when I get a click through to that, I want to track that wherever it's going. It's okay if it goes to various portions. You know, we want to know where all that traffic is going from. So we're building, Kelly is currently building uh, the perpetual keyword money machine tracking system. It'll, be, it'll look a lot like this. This is kind of small because it's on Flash. But it'll look like this, but you'll be able to track and organize all the traffic as it's coming through using something called PWIC. Is anybody familiar with PWIC? So we're actually adding our proprietary framework to it so that it's organized in a way that has better interface than PWIC. But the PWIC tracking, it'll allow you to remove your tracking 
and any of your data from our system so that you're not stuck with us as a system. Okay, but it'll have the network empire frame, which is essentially this. You'll be able to track all of your traffic, and you'll be able to know there was a social media click or a Google click or uh, from the search engines. What that does also allow you to do is help you understand the keyword being used because if you follow the Network Empire system, you will have built all of these sites. So what we taught at the event this week, you would have built all these sites knowing what your keywords are using the Trident report, which is an automated empire builder software that we have that was released at the live event. And so those keywords, you'll know where they are and if you use the PWIC system coming up, you'll be able to click and track through. And, you know, I don't know if you guys know that, but Google removes a lot of the keywords, right, coming to your site. You can get some of them from Google Analytics, and you can get some of them from Google Webmaster Tools. They basically tell, the, tell you what they want to tell you, right? Does everybody know that? So that's what we're working on now, Paul. It's kind of a sidetrack. Um, it's about 30 days out, I think, maybe less. Um, but in the meantime, the UT UTM code is awesome because you can... Just put, you know, your website right in here. So let's go back over to this test site for PinVid. Um, give me an example. Let's go to, oh, just to make sure you guys know that there is no question at all. The most highly clicked location for a video site like this is right under the video. Right? Has everybody got that? Okay, it's going to be right here. And I tested this out of 20 videos. See how horrible and ugly this thing is? Sheesh, does it get clicks? So what do you guys think the squirrel is, is in here that people want to click? I'm pretty sure, I haven't done any hot map testing, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's the it's free part and the red button. <laughs> this uh, process map is also kind of interesting but incomplete. So you might want to consider those types of things when building your banners. You know, just really look at what it is that's going to pull. You might want to test two or three different things on different sites. So this has a UTM code over it, Paula. I'm trying to see if I can. Oh, actually, I'm testing something really weird on this site. Probably you guys shouldn't have seen that. Damn, a secret. I'm trying to hover over a new technology. But normally, I just do. Let's go back to the. Let's go back to one of my. You guys won't judge me too harshly this morning, will you? Yeah, you will. <laughs> Oh, nice. Nice comment. <laughs> Steve was saying that his eyes were drawn to the power button as well. Yeah, they, the power button really helps. I have done some testing, Steve, with a power button versus not a power button and had an, with the exact same banner and had a significant decrease in clicks. It's like the laser pointer for the brain, you know, like a laser pointer is for cats. Did you guys ever see a cat chase a laser pointer? Apparently, anything like that, buttons that we, you know, that we, they're designed to create a distraction. Since we're so used to clicking buttons, and it's a very common thing. I'm going to show you guys a legacy site that you should not emulate. I'm only doing this for Paula because I want to show her the. Oh, here's somebody from the team. Hang on. <laughs> Please tell Sue. Hang on, guys. Okay. I tried to tell her I'm holding the fort and that you guys are being real sports about it. <laughs> so my big talk on Monday at the event is really about the reptilian brain, sometimes called the crocodile brain, in terms of marketing. So the only thing that rep, the crocodile brain ever asks is why now and what's changed. So you have to try to get that activated when you're creating banners. Okay, One of the things that you can do passively is just to use what's already in the brain. And red buttons you know, are like laser pointers. There's all kinds of things in nature that are like laser pointers. I saw a really funny meme the other day. It said, boobs are like laser pointers for men. I was just laughing my butt off because it was on some site talking about, you know, what attract <laughs> everything. <laughs> oh, you guys, oh, you guys have some funny comments coming from that one. But, you know, even though it's kind of crass, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> I 
Okay, why is it that all of the men are, are making the, the crass comments? Okay, so I know why, I'm just noticing. All right, that's enough. <laughs> so, but it is true, you think about these things in nature that through a million years of evolution have been created as a trigger in the brain, okay? And, or whatever you want to believe about how it came to be, it's just a fact, it works and it works through huge amounts of testing. So this little image or process map, whenever you, it is converting 10 or 15% higher. Now for Paula, if you could see, you probably can't see below, but you can see the networkempire.com. If I hover over this banner, the link goes to UTM source. And I, I like to track the UTM source both via the banner and the code. Part of it is because when I go to the campaign area inside Google Analytics, it'll tell me exactly where the visitors are coming from. So I don't want to insult, insult anyone's intelligence. We just have a lot of different people at a lot of different levels of understanding in here. So if I'm moving too fast with this stuff, just let me know. I know that not everybody's even used Google Analytics or tracking codes, but we just uh, I'm going to assume that you have. Okay, so that's how I created this. What I did is, Paula, if I knew that this is going to go to Network Empire, I would simply go to, net, I would go to the UTM code maker, which I've dropped for everybody, which is definitely not this. And you just go right here. You just put in the site that you want to go to. Let's say it was Network Empire News. The campaign source, I like to list really, really carefully because I want... Google Analytics to be really, really, really clear. So when I get up in the morning and I look at all of the analytics within my Google Analytics account or my Pewik account, I just like to have an overview. I like to look at all the traffic and see where things are coming from. And if I want to click deeper, I want to find out which pin vids are delivering traffic. Let me just open that, open that up for you guys. Since this is only a demo site. Okay. The main thing that you just let me I'm gonna show Paula like what what the tracking is about. It's nice and lonely in here without my team, isn't it? It shows you what a team's all about. Okay. George is saying from now on he's going to brain, blame his crocodile brain for all laser pointer distractions. Okay. Um, while, this, while I'm bringing this up, uh, I'm going to answer another question. Andres is asking, how can I talk to somebody about your program? Total newbie, I don't know where to start. Uh, Andres, let me send you a link. I've got a... <laughs> yes, George, I never would have read that actually the way that it was. I have tact. Uh, Andres is saying he would like to know more about things, and he's kind of a beginner. I have a document that's decent. It'll help you which way to go, you know, within OMG, within Network Empire, and so on and so forth. I know there's a lot of stuff going on, and there's laser pointers everywhere. <laughs> so everybody take a deep breath. And Andreas, remind me to get that to you. If I also come to the Skype room, and you can also ping me personally on Skype. If you are in Director's Cut, then... Yeah, I gotcha. I've had Kevin try to hunt down Sue, that's what I'm looking for here. Okay. Okay, so here's a pretty bad pin bid site. Analytics, meaning I consider this the worst of the worst. This is the multi-channel university one I was showing you. Okay, 
So you can see that there's this amount of sessions and so on and so forth. Let me just go see if I can give you some. You can see that it definitely drives traffic. Remember, the last time that we did anything for this site was July of last year. Like, there's no maintenance. All we do is make sure that the server goes up. I consider this site to be mostly a failure because it has only 37 seconds of on-page average duration. And that's pretty low. We usually have anywhere between two and seven. So that either means they're bouncing off the site pretty quickly, okay, or who knows? I'm not sure what that means, really. So I can go deeper into this and track all these things if I want. Okay, but the really thing is important is, like, where are those banners going? Like, what's the referral rate? There is other referrals happening. Okay, and there's some, in, there, most of the keywords are kind of random marketing terms. But you don't really care about that because the idea is to get them on the site, spending time watching videos. The bounce rate is excessively high on that one, but you get the idea. But what's more interesting than that, which speaks to the UTM code, Paul is asking about. Let me see here if I can pull this up. If you really want to look at conversions where people come to the site, your money site, from that. Okay. And where that's going to, what's going to matter there, Paula, is when you go to Google Analytics and PeeWick, it's slightly different. You're going to go down to acquisition. You're going to look in this area called campaigns. Can everybody see that? So I care less about my pin vid sites and more about the target site. So when you look at your campaigns, you know, obviously we have hundreds of pin vid sites set up, but here's one where you can see the under video banner is by far the, high, the biggest traffic coming from multi-channel university. Can you guys give me a one if you get the idea of what I care about? I don't care as much about the pin vid site as I do the time on site to this main site. So when people hit that banner with the laser pointer button on it and that process map porn, they hit this site. This is not a huge amount of traffic compared to other things that we have, but you know they are staying on this site 11 minutes and 44 seconds. Does that make sense? Okay, and just, you know, if you guys were to sit with me throughout my day and watch what I do, you know, this is just one, the under, matter, the under video text gets about, you know, gets some hits too on a weekly basis, but I should give you an idea. Now, you multiply this by 100 or 1,000 websites, right? Then you start getting huge amounts of traffic, and this is a very low-performing site, okay? This, I would have to consider this a very low-performing site. Uh, I'm talking about the traffic that comes from some of these, all right? So these are old versions. So that's really what we care about. And the UTM code, I guess what I was trying to say here, Paula, to you is that the UTM code, when you put, I put multi, I put the name of the site and I just give myself, I've changed it to be a little bit shorter, under video banner, so under vid banner, UVB, I've changed it to recently. So that allows you to name your campaign source here, okay? So when you name your campaign source from a video, you wanna go ahead and put that in these locations. And then you just click submit, so I would put, uh, you could do something like this, pin vid under a video banner. You could do like site name. That way when you started getting traffic from those under video banners, they started getting clicked and you looked at the campaign at your target site, you would actually know where they came from. I don't want to have to dig deeper into the site. I want to know, I want to be able to look at my daily overview and see exactly where that traffic is coming from off of a pin vid. That makes sense, you guys, gals. Okay. Another thing that you should really care about with, when it comes to video cracking the pinvid site is submitting your site map. That's the first thing that you're really going to want to do. Give me a one if you syndicate if you submitted a site map before, and a two if you haven't. I tried to show it in one of the videos. Okay, some of you have, some of you haven't. Now, keep in mind that I'm aware that everybody here has varying, varying levels of paranoia when it comes to using Google Analytics. If any of you are using PBNs, and I'm sure that you are if you're talking about PBMs here, just automatically assume that you should probably 
follow Greg Morrison's conversation. You should probably follow his suggestions. Okay. And uh, that's a pretty important fact. I'm not here to address the, the various paranoia levels. We talk about it frequently. You can hear our teams talk on what we call Google Skyfall. Uh, when it comes to PBNs, you definitely want to diversify and either get rid of your UTM codes and so on and so forth. So just please filter with that. But I do want to show you guys the importance of sitemaps and reduce all of the useless things in your marketing and in your SEO efforts. The first thing that you should always do, if, you're, if your site is siloed very well and it's a small site, maybe 20 or 30 pages, chances are the siloing structure itself will get you properly indexed and properly crawled. But if you're working with a really, really large site, like let's say, you know, the one we were just looking at, because eventually everybody will be able to make stuff like that. If you're dealing with a super long, um, a super huge site, you're going to want to submit your sitemap. Part of that is because when you're dealing with thousands of pages, sometimes there's spider traps on the page, sometimes pages disappear, sometimes the silo breaks, especially if you've got, you know, half a million pages or something like that. Now, I'm not suggesting you all run out and do that, you know, this morning, like try to make a million pages and join the billion page club. I'm just suggesting that you consider it, you know, when you're dealing with large sites of any kind. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, I was going to show you this one. Now, occasionally, this is actually a shot of Google Webmaster Tools. And what's weird about Google Webmaster Tools is sometimes things will fall off. Like right now, there's 100,000 pages <laughs> missing because probably because one of my sitemaps disappeared and then came back up. Now, you know, multiply this site, which I consider, again, this is the multi-channel university site. Multiply this by 100 or 1,000 sites or whatever you guys have ambitions for. And this is a very, very bad one. And in terms of what it actually delivers, because it was legacy, it was one of the first ones we ever built when we were testing this model. You know, there's 161,000 index pages. The SEO is terrible. And this drives sales, like direct sales for Network Empire. Now, so you guys can understand why I like that model, right? It's like this, is a, this was an accident. Like it was just a total disaster. I created my own disaster here, and it still works. So if something really sucks this bad and it makes direct sales, then it truly and authentically is automated income, but you have to have a little bit of discipline to make it. You know what I mean? It's that type of thing. So... That's why I just want to be honest with you guys. It's like, you know, you got to learn how to set it up properly and you got to learn a little bit of technical stuff. But, you know, with this many index pages, there's actually 200,000. Looks like the sitemap failed. And this traffic is actually not accurate. It's at least three times that amount. But Google just lies. So you, you already know that. Okay, so that's a little bit about a sitemap. All you have to do to submit a sitemap is just go to, and if you're talking about a PBN, Please see Greg Morrison's stuff. Okay, just go ahead and add your sitemap right here. You go into Google Analytics, click up here in this area, and you just put the sitemap URL right in here. Just add test sitemap. Okay, and then you go, boom. All right, so this is a crappy little test site that's not delivering too bad of results. It takes up a little space on the server, but we have it compressed. You know, again, this is one of hundreds of sites we have. So that's the, the purpose of getting the sitemap on there is just to make sure that you get crawled and also helps you keep uh, track of your videos. I have over 75,000 YouTube videos indexed. Makes sense? Okay, it works, guys. So this is why we created Video Kraken. And this is not even a siloed site that we were just talking to Luke about and everyone else. This is the old version of Video Kraken. Even the current version of Video Kraken just rocks. Okay, just make sure that you don't blow yourself up with it. Okay. Paul D. asked, on sites with 10,000 pages, are these auto-generated or have you created individual pages and unique content? Great question, Paul. No, this is just using the Video Kraken plugin. But it's done uh, 
it's done like this pretty much only after I can only guarantee success with this if you have taken our full certification level course but you can still do a lot of damage and a lot of get a lot of traffic with just the basic stuff we've been providing you guys in Director's Cut. I couldn't give you the entire course in Director's Cut, first of all, because it's actually just too huge. Um, Linda Joseph is asking, what should I do about crawl errors? Well, crawl errors can be a variety of different things. And I'm trying to think what Sue would tell you if she were here. Um, crawl errors, probably you want to get to your IT person and double check. If you don't have anything, uh, depend, Linda, depending upon your level of expertise, you might want to just get somebody to take a look at them for you. Just so you know, crawl errors only get my attention on pinvid sites when they're very serious, meaning your site is gone. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. And part, part of that is because unless my site is grossly slowed down and unless the spider consistently remains, like if you get an email that says Googlebot cannot, is having problems with certain pages on your site, and you're really looking at thousands of pages, then you really want to get somebody to look at your various files. Always have somebody on your team, you guys, that's able to handle that kind of stuff. Crawl errors are usually something not right with the t .txt. They can also be just your server going down. If you, for example, are on a shared hosting account, sometimes that hosting has weird things happening to it. All you have to do is wait for a minute and things will go back to normal. Okay. So again, this is big ambitious project guys, but I think you can see how even a crappy one will do. And that's really what you want to look at. Oh, Linda is saying that her site traffic just dropped off the cliff. Okay. Well, that could be any number of things. I really don't know. I would have to know way more Linda about your uh, specific case. Traffic can disappear for all kinds of reasons, including a de-indexing or something like that. Okay, Ben is asking, is there a guide somewhere in the Network Empire Wiki or website that shows how to make large sites safely with Video Kraken? No. That's a course, Ben. I'm sorry. I tried to do it. Uh, there is a help file, but the course is actually part of our advanced certification. There's not too much you could do to blow yourself up with Video Kraken. Um, one of the main things that we're suggesting, Ben, the big takeaway is, sorry, there's a lot of questions coming down the screen. I'm getting buried in questions. That's okay. One of the main things that you need to be aware of, Ben, when it comes to pinvid sites, the catch-all is just make the sites sticky. You know, make sure the videos are presented in a way that's entertaining to others. Make sure, you know, you have nice colors and styles. Make sure it was designed nicely. Don't just use our default theme, like get a different background on there. Uh, one of the things that really, really helps, you know, help meets Google's requirements and standards is to put social status buttons on the site. It's incredibly helpful. In other words, own the site or have a staff member own the site so that it looks like not so that it looks like, so it actually is owned by a person. Okay, that's really, really helpful if you want to do that. Uh, Mike Woody, that would be a help desk question. And if you're not getting support there, um, go ahead and ping me on Skype personally. I'm going to leave my Skype name. I do apologize for that, Mike. I'm not making excuses, just saying that we are just recovering. We're almost recovered and digging out from the the live Network Empire certification event, and I will get her, somebody on that just as straight as I can, okay? Sorry about that, Mike. Okay, let's see. What are all the questions that we can get into here? I think Paula got the UTM code solution. George O'Brien is saying that he's still learning a lot. That's okay, George. I think we all are. I mean, I know that I continue to learn. I have a regular learning curve process. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open this up for questions. Everything that you ever wanted to know about the universe but were afraid to ask, go ahead. There's no one else in the room to hear me get in trouble. What do you want to know? The answer is 42. Norman is asking, can I have the link to the documents where you lay out how to go through the OMG materials? Hmm. 
Uh, I don't have the OMG materials uh, thing, Norman, but I do have, let me see if I can find something for you guys. You're so amazingly patient. Let me ask you something, Norman, since we're listening. Oh, Steve Toomey asked, what are the numbers that keep showing up on Lost About? I actually could seriously get into that with you, but I don't think everybody else would appreciate it. <laughs> okay, good. Let me see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to update this with a document seems to be when it comes to OMG Norman can you tell me Norman can you tell me what it is that you would like to feel more clear about in OMG just give me a, give me an explanation that way I can pass that on to David Mills I just want to make sure that you had a roadmap coming in because I don't know I didn't create the OMG site so I want to make sure that I pass that back to the team and Cotton and all those guys and make sure that you know which paths you're following. Okay. Let me see if I can find that. Here's a little helpful. Let me see if I can find that. Kind of all over the map today. I wrote a document called Did my best to help you guys who might be coming, getting exposure. I read a little document. I think it was with Fran, who's in the room. I think she left after the laser pointer comment, though. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, feeling like a kid in a candy shop, network empire, traffic products. Okay. Anyway, what I did is I sat down working with Lorraine, everybody, and I tried to answer specifically on our end of things. Now, this is not OMG specific, but what I'd like to do is create an OMG uh, specific as well. Yeah, Greg's saying, Greg Herbert's saying that you can also email omg at omg.com. Okay, and so there's a few of you saying you want to get a little bit of clarity there, and that's cool. I get that. Now, for those of you who don't know, this will help cover anything you've been exposed on our side, because this is not uh, this is not omg specific, but everything I say in here will help you keep your focus, like what you're really interested in, because there really is, there's several different kinds of people, you know, there are, you know, there are those of you who have an agency, and then all you care about is rankings, there's those of you who have your own stuff that you want to sell, and your interest is slightly different, the common denominator with all this is that we do have rankings, I'm going to go ahead and drop this in, because even though it's network empire centric, it's also for everybody, and it could be helpful might be helpful for you. So let me just go ahead and drop that into the document area. Okay. Okay, let's go back to the stuff of interest. Boom. Norman is saying he'd like a roadmap on how to make money the fastest, also a roadmap on how to think about ranking sites from basic to advanced. Okay. I'm jotting that down, and I will make sure that the roadmaps are clear. Yeah, hang on a second, Paula. Okay, I'm going to put that link in the chat for everybody. Peter Coyle is asking me to go over the Network Empire levels of SEO certification and what each entails. This is kind of an OMG webinar, Peter, so I think what I'd like to do is just direct you to swallowyourmarkethole.com. I do cover each one of those there rather than take up the OMG time here. 
I've left you the link though. And uh, certification is pretty intense. <laughs> it's not for everybody. It's definitely not the type of thing you would want to do if you're trying to make money. You want to earn money by tomorrow morning. It's not a business opportunity, so to speak. Network Empire is more like a college. It's not really about affiliate marketing necessarily, although you can use it for that. Uh, but I really do appreciate the question, and I've dropped you the link that should be helpful to start. And if you have further questions, just please contact me on the help desk. I'm absolutely 100% excited to help you. Mike Woody is asking, in all fairness, I think is a great question. In terms of actual pages created, what does Craig and do that vSilo doesn't, apart from creating mass posts and schedule? vSilo is only is just a quick silo, static silo page, Mike, and Video Kraken is designed to siphon every YouTube video in the universe and publish it forever until your server burns out or until you just can't stand it anymore. Like one is, a, I don't like to use the word auto-blogging because it has a stigma, but it's actually video blogging. And we view it more as broadcasting because of something called engagement rank. Engagement rank is a very tricky thing. So the way that we teach that is if there was a website, let me ask you guys a question. If there was a website out in internet land that had traffic of real people, real humans, and they stayed on that page and watched the video and were engaged in that video for 15 minutes on average, and that page was generated automatically, would Google still consider that spam? Would that page still be considered spam? Well, that's a tricky question because it kind of is still, by definition, spam. Okay, I mean, it's tricky because you won't have a lot of problem with these sites as long as you try to make them engaging. And that includes a whole bunch of things, not just one thing, like just randomly posting videos. But as soon as you start to create a structure, as soon as you try to create an organized infrastructure that points to a theme and that generates all kinds of ideas around a similar theme within the site, then you're going to have better luck. And once these sites start getting traffic and social engagement, then the site becomes whatever you tell Google it's about, especially if it's getting tracking. Part of the reason is that Google views YouTube, and if you want to read a little bit more about my thoughts on engagement rank, you can go to engagementrank.com. It's one of my sites. Okay, I did a little snippet extract about engagement rank and why it's kind of weird and creates contradictions and why you really can't view video by itself as spam or even as autoblogging. It's not quite the same thing. I'll go ahead and drop this link in there for you guys. It's a little bit different. Part of it has to do with engagement. And also, we have a nice definition on our wiki about engagement. It's important for you guys to think about engagement because it does. it's not whether or not a site is automated. It's whether or not it contains these factors. And therefore, the definition of spam kind of becomes irrelevant, right? If, if you had a robot that could build something that captivated people's attention, you know, it was like Laser Pointer City, I mean, Google's not going to care. All they care about is the engagement. Does that make sense, you guys? Give me one if that sort of makes sense. Okay. Excellent. Hi, Don. The answer to your question of the YouTube API is going away April 15th. Does that affect the YouTube imports? You don't have to worry about anything on our coding side because obviously, you know, we handle that on the back end. That's more API access is really more of a coding issue. And we don't get too much into coding with students. We just make sure that you get what you need. There's all kinds of ways to do different things. So the answer is no, it's not going to. The plugins aren't going away. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, Paul is asking, do you have Google tracking on PinVid sites or the keyword links on your main site from the PinVid W2 and W3 sites? I do put tracking, uh, Google tracking on the PinVid sites. And I would prefer to use PeeWeek. Sometimes I do. 
and the new PKMM system will replace that. But yes, you want to be really careful. When you're doing, again, I've got to be careful here because I know a lot of you are talking about PBNs when you're talking about this. There are plain branded pin bid sites, and then there are, you know, PBNs that utilize video Kraken, right? So it really depends on what you're talking about here. But generally speaking, for SEO, if you've taken our traffichospital.com course, which is about recovery and prevention, the UA code, when you're checking backlinks, can definitely be a flag, especially if you're trying to cover your tracks. I'm not suggesting that you should cover your tracks. You should just build things sustainably. However, if you want to live in a paranoid world, your UA code, that is your Google Analytics code, can be a problem. So the answer to that question is just provide, create sites that are engaging and don't be doing a lot of tricky business and you should be fine. But don't, oh, one thing that's worth mentioning there is if you're using the same UA code sequence, meaning they're all from the same master account, in Google Analytics, there is a way for you to, gosh, I'm trying to think of how I could show you that. There's a way that you can take one master UA account and then have sub accounts and put like 20 websites under one project account. When you do that, you have the same UA initial ID code. And then when you, the backlink tools and Kemper and all these other things, they'll show all the UA codes coming from the same series. It's almost like the same IP address series. And you don't really want to do that. You really want to have, if you're going to use the Google Analytics code, just make sure you have a completely clean, brand new, separated out UA code for every site that you do. Don't use, don't have like 20 pin bids under one account. Let me see if I can give you an example of what not to do. That's actually a very good question. <laughs> Let me see if I can figure out a way to show you that. Hang on. Okay. Let me see how I can best figure out a way to show you guys this. Meanwhile, squirrel. I got another screen. I'm trying to find an example. You guys just watch the laser pointer for a second while I get this. Okay. Okay, I'm not really able to find you guys a good example, but that's really, really good. I want to put that in the documentation and make sure that you see that. Just when you open, when you open an account in Google Analytics, if you're going to use Google Analytics, not PWIC, you're going to be up under admin, okay? So when you have, when you open multiple sites under the same account, they'll all tend to have the same UA code. Does that make sense? So you don't have to have all your sites into the same account. You can have multiple accounts, okay? And you, you can have multiple properties under a single account. And when you do that, they'll tend to have the same, I believe it's the first three. You don't really want to have them all be se sequential, okay? So if you set up the first, if you set up the sites all under the same account, that is kind of a super hardcore red flag. <laughs> like, you don't really want to do that. Okay. 
Good. Well, I have some good news. Sue um, is going to be on the call, and she's just getting with us here soon. And I hope that makes sense to you guys about that. Um, George is asking, does your separate UA code recommendation apply if we have a branded sites that are related to it? Or should they also say separate? I don't know. Like, if they're branded, it would be less of a concern to me. But it's so easy to create separate UA, UA codes, I would just, you know, consider if it's easy for you to do that. It's just when you get into the messy stuff that UA codes leave that tracking, that, that sequential tracking number. Good morning, Sue. Good morning. How are you? Do you have coffee? Good. I have had coffee, yes. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Well, I was just telling everybody about the live events, and they knew that we had a slow morning this morning, and they've been incredibly patient. So I've been doing a, a song and dance with some pin vid stuff, and... They asked me a bunch of forbidden questions, and I shared them my kitty looking at the laser pointer when I didn't have something to say. <laughs> Just went, squirrel. And my favorite one, because we had that talk on the laser pointer. I, I covered the croc brain on Monday. But the one that's my favorite, which is really horrible, is when they strapped the laser pointer to the kitty's head, and it just entertained itself for hours. But it's so mean. But I couldn't help but laugh. Okay, so now we have really super hardcore questions coming in because you're here. <laughs> what? Bring it. Bring it on. Let's Bring it on. <laughs> all right. Everybody, first of all, let's give Sue a huge round of ones. We love you. We love you. We love you. Aww. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Ooh, one, one, one. Paula gave more ones than everybody else. One, one, one. Paul's a close second. Pip's a second. One. One, one. Okay, cool. It's great to be here. Thanks, guys. Yeah, so the only thing that we've really covered is we got sidetracked because Paula asked, and a great question, not sidetracked, but our focus was Paula asking on UTM creation, and that's something that I, I know how to do. So we went a little bit into the creation of, you know, tracking for the banners on the Pinvid site. Okay. We had somebody uh, talk about the... You know, just wanting to know specifics about vSilo versus Video Kraken, which is easy to answer. Uh, somebody uh, actually asked more of a help desk question on how to get rid of, blow away a silo when they goof on the DWS import. I showed them that. I think I answered that one correctly, which is okay. just the category just page. Gotta and, empty your, just got to yeah. empty your trash. That's the yeah. tricky part. And I did, the, I did get that one. I remembered that one. Yeah. That, one, that one's caused me a lot of pain. So you got to <laughs> empty your trash. I think I told Luke, you have to empty your trash on your categories and your, you know, so just let them sit there. It won't fix it. You actually have to delete. Do right. full delete. Other than that, uh, it's been pretty much all we've covered. Here's one of the questions coming in now. Got the one feed supercharger, and I really don't know anything about RSS. So when you first start using it for the first time, are feeds supposed to be individual articles in your blog that we load up at one at a time? Are we adding the sum of articles in the blog and titling it something relevant? Now, that would have had to require your coffee. You would have had to have coffee to answer that one. Dang. All right. Let me look at this. Okay. One feed supercharger. Don't know anything about RSS. So when you first start using it for the first time, are the feeds supposed to be individual articles on your blog that we load up one at the time? Are we adding the sum of articles? Hmm. I don't... Hmm. So... It depends on what you want to do with your feed. Um, individual articles on your blog, we load up one at a time, adding the sum of articles in the blog and titling it something relevant. So the cool thing about One Feed Supercharger is that you can make a whole bunch of feeds. And each feed can have its own purpose in life. So um, you can have one feed that's just got historical content in it. You can have another feed that's got just the new content in it, but may be different from your default feed. So, like, maybe your default feed, usually I set my default feed so that it's just got the uh, synopsis in it, and then I'll set my one feed supercharger feed so that it's got the entire content in it. And um, because there's sometimes in some places where I want all my content, but mostly I want people who are going to pick up my feed to, to just grab the synopsis so they got to come back to my blog. So I can use that one, that feed that's got the entire content in it. 
Um, maybe for some specific posts on my WR2 or something along those lines. So it just provides more versatility. Um, so when you, you have a feed, you can put it in a lot of different places. You can put it out on feed directories and feed search engines. You can push it through your social media platforms. Um, and you can push it through a ring system. Right. Or if you've got PBNs, you can post your feeds on your PBNs to help provide new content over there, fresh content that turns regularly. So, um, so if you have historical content, every time um, that feed is viewed, the historical content changes. So you get new content all the time. So if you've got, say, a synopsis of, of five or six older posts, then you put that over on your PBN, then you've got content that's always changing on your PBN, where PBN is usually considered kind of a static thing. Um, and that helps to get uh, your older content viewed more, helps to get a little bit of traffic to some of those older posts. So that can be quite useful. Um, another thing you can do, so, so that's why I say it just it depends on what it is that you want to do. So. I would start with a feed that I want to have that goes out to um, feed directories and feed search engines and that kind of thing. What we usually, it, it's the sort of stuff that we taught in the one feed um, area inside of Director's Cut and Project B. And, um, and then just kind of take it from there as you find stuff that you want to do with it then if you don't already have a feed that's appropriate, you can create another one. You can braid your feed with other people's content, and that helps add diversity. And, uh, and it's just like cool, fun stuff that you can use to, to broadcast yourself everywhere under a whole bunch of different circumstances. Yes, and uh, we have more and more help categories for the One Feed Supercharger help file coming and continually adding. So don't forget to look at that help file as well. And I appreciate the questions. There are a lot of strategy questions. Like somebody asked, Jimmy in the social explosion area has a video about how to use pipes. Uh, and the question was, can I use one feed supercharger to do something sort of similar-ish? And I believe the answer to that is yes, you could do that with one feed supercharger. I think that was made before we had that, that download page area. But I have to recall it exactly, but I believe you can. <clears throat> Kevin is asking, when you get a client site that is not siloed, what is the best way to build domain authority? Well, with unique and interesting content that acts as a gravity magnet towards, with people's intention via engagement rank. Just kidding. No, you want hacks, I know. Um, domain authority comes over time by building trust over time. That's the first method. It's not necessarily white hat or black hat. It's just anything that's interesting tends to attract links. So that would be the first way to build domain authority. The other fastest way, because you didn't say fastest, you said best. And the best way is just to create a whole bunch of laser pointers at your site is one giant laser pointer city. Um, but that being said, if, aside from that, uh, social explosion creates massive amounts of domain authority over time and requires a commitment, but that's, what's, that's the trust that's passed through social explosion. And we tried to make it brain dead simple and it has been the most brain dead simple thing that we have. In fact, it's almost too simple because people think they need to do something. Uh, you have to install it and then turn it on. And that's it. Help desk. Um, so that's the fastest way to build domain authority in terms of, actually not the fastest, that's the least effortful. Fastest way to build domain authority is to have a lot of trust sites coming in. In other words, when you have high authority sites that are closer to your page, in other words, have them as close as possible with as few hops away as possible. Okay, this is all about trust flow. Does everybody know trust flow? Okay, we talk about that in there. You can also use domain authority stacking, but you know, go in there understanding that trust flow. Look at the definitions that we give you. Okay, cool. <clears throat> How can you get social exposure to spread out the links to different pages of your site rather than all on the home page? Uh, 
I don't think Special they... Special Explosion, by its very nature, yeah. won't actually post to your homepage. Yeah, I'm not it's sure why you think them. that, Larry. Yeah, it doesn't do that to begin with, so... Any post that you submit goes to that specific post, which means you have buoyant domain authority from the page. Okay. Does that make sense, Larry? It doesn't target the home page. Thank goodness. But the home page will tend to represent the overall domain authority in people's minds. I, I think I understand where that confusion comes from. <clears throat> Paula says, I don't, okay, I'm going to leave you out there, Paula. I'm sorry you're responding to my last question. Kevin said, Jimmy said, DAS does not work on, domain authority stacking does not work on older sites. I think uh, he was commenting was a little bit more complex than that, uh, but I don't know exactly the quote that you're talking about. Uh, older sites, what he probably was implying, and I think the statement I know you're referring to, is older sites already have quite a bit of domain authority. So I think you probably might want to look at it in terms of above 55 domain authority and then moving into the 80s and 90s. That's where the things get really challenging. So if you mean older by higher authority, that's probably what was meant. I'm not an expert on this topic and probably shouldn't speak to it at all. So I know the basics of what I've been taught by Sue and Jimmy. Other than that, I'm not the person to add strategies if Sue wants to jump in and take that. I'll step out of the way. Oh, sorry, I was distracted. Okay. Was that the Jimmy question? I think I answered it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He said older sites usually have built-in history that may not always be good. Yeah, Kevin, my caution with this type of thing is that built-in history can mean any number of things. Let, let, let's try to be discreet or specific with what we're saying. Well, if we're talking about a backlinking profile, then yeah, that would be a history for sure. Yeah, that's exactly what he would be talking about. Mm -hmm. And when you have, with older sites, you're going to have pre-existing links. And depending on the quality of the links and what the inbound anchor text links are and yeah. a myriad of other factors, that can make it harder to move that site. Yeah. And uh, Jimmy's not here this week. Sue could definitely answer any questions on this. We'll, I'll definitely, we'll definitely try to make sure that he can make it next week. He'll be back next week. Yeah, yeah, and we can get deeper into the domain authority stuff. Okay, good. Still parsing questions here. Okay. How do you handle putting the legal pages privacy policy terms on your sites affordably? and the volume of the site that you have. Do you have a large number of policy privacy terms, David? Seems to me that you should be able to just do one page and have them be referred to, and or an archive and have them be referred to. Well, you need to do one for each domain. Um, from that entire domain, usually you can link to that one set of pages. Yeah. And so I tend to have a template where I've got highlighted the things that I need to change okay. so that I can move through those templates and update it quickly and post it up. Oh, okay. So that does that make sense, David? One page and then have it be a target page? There's no point. I don't think you have to put it on the domain on each site, do you, Sue? That's what you're just saying, you don't have to? You don't have to put it on each subdomain, no. You can have one for the entire domain. Uh. What about you have to have one on every site that you have that has the same products, right? So any but is it the transactional? Is it is it the tra every transaction any site that has a transaction you have to have on there or or do we know? Well, there's a few different things that um, require that you have those kinds of pages. Like if you're going to have um, paid advertisement on there, oftentimes they require that. Um, certain merchant accounts are going to oh, yes. require that uh -huh. you have that. Um, so there's a couple of different kinds of things. Um, no, I have actually not ever had an attorney draw those up. I just okay. I found a set that I liked and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, most of the um, most of the folks we work with don't have a legal department, David. But if you do, I'm sure that somebody there will be able to either find or 
pilfer a, a template and follow Sue's model as well. There's plenty of templates online. And then you could either have a, an attorney look at those and just make doubly sure that they work for your company and they're specific. Joanne is asking, can you recommend someone for tech support via video silo? I really need tech support. Okay. Um, have you gone to the help desk, Joanne? You're not able to communicate with any other health staff or... So I'll just say everybody was at CERT last week, and, and I know the help desk is a little bit backlogged, but we're working really, really hard to try and get that backlog down. Yeah, we're working so, on um, Joanne, if you can just maybe drop that link to me in Skype personally. Uh, you know my yeah. theme Zoom account, and I will help modulate it. We actually have a those, – those of you guys don't know that we have a private – Skype group just for our help staff and team. <laughs> okay, so we are aware that we're behind. And Joanne, I'd like to personally apologize to you about that. We were vi we were very very busy. Sir, not an excuse, just a fact. We're trying to communicate to all of you that definitely the biggest week of our lives uh, during the year, and we're going to be coming back, digging out and getting everything that you guys need. So Joanne, just drop me that personally. Okay. Yeah, Patrick, that's something that always happens when you're on vacation, and we're like, yeah, vacation, if only. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Patrick, you, you can feel free to, to send us a plane tickets to somewhere, though, if uh, you have an idea where we might like to go for vacation. <laughs> Paul is asking, when is the next certification event? We're actually working on oh, that now. I actually now. scheduled that. Uh -huh. I scheduled that already. Um, I'll go ahead and drop the link in for you guys. Sue has already been... Right now, I'm swimming in a sea of testimonials to the point where, you know, as a marketer, I used to be really big on testimonials. I don't care if I ever see one again. <laughs> it's like I have enough to last me for the next two years. Um, it really was a big event, and we worked really, really hard to make sure that everybody could understand that stuff. And I want to work equally hard in here and make sure that you guys get what you need here. What is the name of Social Explosion download file? I bought it and can't find it in my – really, Corey – your uh, no, delete your download file. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> one thing to mention, Corey, is like one of the things I learned is starting to organize that file folder would be really, really helpful. But the file name you should be able to search for. Let me see if I can find it for you. Hang on just a second. It should be WP. I'm looking for it as well. I know exactly what that's like, Corey, to, to get lost in a sea of files. I'm looking as well. It looks like it should be called social-explosion-plugin.zip. Social-explosion-plugin.zip. You guys will be tested on this at the end of this call. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. All right. What else do we have here today? Let me see. It is all right. I'm going to try to find the. Hang on a second. Okay, Norman. I'm going to go back to your question. Uh, you said if you answered my question earlier, I had to sign on off briefly. If if I was going to build an SEO agency website and my goal was to rank in multiple cities locations. Would you still do a Google business listings and a Google places listings, or would you forgo that because you want to do business in multiple locations? Sue? Say that again? Okay, <laughs> sorry. This is one you should definitely cover this at the event, but I could answer it, but I'm a, you're the expert. Okay. So if I wanted to build an SEO agency website and the goal was to rank in multiple states, cities, locations, would you still do a Google My Business listing and Google Places listing, or would you forego that because you want to do business in multiple locations? Well, I would still have um, a Google listing, yes, absolutely. Would um, you do it for every city, or how would you go about that? Well, you can only have – you can only do it for every city if you actually have an office in those cities. So um, – but I believe on your Google business page, there's a place where you can specify the locations where you do business. Okay. And that you can make that as broad as you want. Um, I 
you know, there's also Plus and Webmaster Tools, but that's not going to be as effective. And the, um, like, I probably would not be so specific on your website. Like, I wouldn't mention, um, unless you're actually trying to rank for the locale, I wouldn't mention where your offices are. Um, so that you come up more in broad match and less in the local searches. I have seen, let me just do a query here. They're doing all kinds of really incredible things with Knowledge Graph right at the moment. Yeah. Um, we're actually having to change Kraken because of the Knowledge Graph inserts. And I'm like what I'm seeing in the chatter is that they're going to go more that more and more that way instead of less. So let me just look for SEO. So when I just type in SEO, I don't actually get any kind of map listing. If I say SEO services. Do you want to grab the screen? or? No, I'm just doing a quick, couple quick Google searches. So if I do SEO services, I'm still not seeing any kind of um, maps. So there's... Um, but of course they hate SEO, so... <laughs> Well, if I do online marketing services, marketing services, um, that's interesting. That finally gave me a local result, like a knowledge graph result in the upper right. And it gave me one single, oh, that's actually really interesting. Do online marketing services. Russ, type in online marketing services. I already have. Oh, it must be delayed. Can everybody else see that? And if you scroll down, you'll see there's that that comes back also with that um, with the address in the Google Plus page. It's just below the fold. Well, you can see it just above the fold, but you see the the dot just under the fold. Sorry, I'm scaled to 100 at a time. Yeah, it's right there, RJ's. Yep. So that's the only thing. It's not an actual map pack um, like normal, but that was I found that interesting, the one to come back from Phoenix. So um, RJ rocks. Now, that's actually us. Just kidding. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, so, so I would say that most SEO and online services are not actually... Fascinatingly enough, because um, at the conference there were a bunch of guys that were very much into the locale for their businesses. Yes. So I would just target the um, the broad terms, and not spend too much time on on citations, on local citations, and on um, and focusing on your address. Excellent. Okay. George is asking, what does it look like when you add geotag to a search? Hmm. Um. I very rarely add geotag to a search unless I'm actually looking for something local. Yeah. So if I do uh, Mesa SEO services, I still don't get a map pack. Anybody else getting a map pack? Yeah, I don't even recalling ever seeing. I think uh, SEO is a catch. I think they're biased against it for real. Yeah. Yeah, I think SEO... I think you might have to consider that as a factor. It's just not a high... I don't know for sure that they're biased against it, but I wouldn't be surprised. Well, I think if you do like Nashville SEO... Yeah. Unless Kevin helped them mark it up. Oh yeah, there it is. Nashville's got some. 
So they've done their packs here. See, I don't get that pack, interestingly enough. You don't? Does anybody else get that? In fact, what I get is, um, what did you do? Oh, I didn't do services. I just did natural SEO. Oh, okay, yeah. I did SEO services. Let me try Los Angeles. I could spell Los Angeles correctly. More, co more, more coffee coming soon. Coming soon. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a ton. Okay. Yeah, that takes you to the maps listings. Heidi said that Stephen, somebody in the group, said that not all areas have the seven pack, just like not all areas have the carousel at the top of the restaurant searches. It depends on the areas. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, clearly. Yeah, interestingly enough, the carousels have disappeared from um, the Phoenix area. So it used to be you type in restaurants, and you get the carousel at the top. And while I was, uh, while I was at certain, I wanted to recommend some of the... Um, Local yeah. restaurants. I tried it and it didn't come up. Yeah, I noticed that. So I had to wonder if they deprecated it. I don't know. I haven't read anything on that. But I'm definitely having those same results since before the event. You know, they're always testing, right, to see the results. I'm not sure. I'll have to look that one up. All right, cool. Thank you. Good night. Okay. And questions are coming in. Now, here's the thing. Next week, our company will be at its full bore throttle. And we will have the questions that you guys submitted at the next one. And quite a few of them have a lot of SEO questions as well, which will get Jimmy on board. By that time, the rest of my team will have gotten some rest. And I'm not going to stay on this call just for the purpose of staying on the call. So I think we'll probably wrap it up here. And we have a lot of really, really cool stuff coming. Once we get our wits about us and wrap everything up in the way that we want to talk to you guys about it and have some sleep. And uh, as you know, Kevin, Kevin Polly gave an incredibly interesting talk on local search. I'm hoping that you guys will begin to gradually learn that stuff at some point. I'm not sure if that's in order, but I do definitely want you guys to be looking at the semantic web. And just to leave you with some interesting insights from Kevin that I thought was really very cool, Think, speaking of local, I just thought it would be fun to share this with you because this kind of blew my, my mind. In fact, I'll probably have lunch here this evening with Sue or dinner. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can fi find it. If they didn't deprecate it. I wonder what was the search. Yeah, it was the company menu, I think. Yeah, check this out. So Kevin showed this at the event. So there's a restaurant not far from Sue called Wildflyer Bread Company. And using this markup, there, there's actually the entire menu is listed on the search. Can you guys see that? I just want to leave you with some food for thought. So this is one of the big takeaways from the event. Every year when people come to our event, and also the same is true with OMG Live. You know, every year I come away from these events really thinking about things that have, like, what's changed and why now. This is one of my big laser pointers that Kevin put in front of me. <laughs> it was really quite distracting because if you really look at it, it's got the entire schema on there. And I just think just an idea of where things are going, uh, you know, is worth having on your radar. And so this is one of the things that I'm really paying a lot of attention to. We're also going to talk, Jimmy will be on the call, we'll also answer all of your questions. Paula has some of the better questions that she leaves. Uh, she doesn't always just chat them here. Paula, I know that you had prepared several questions. We will go through those in next Tuesday. The, the next, once we've recovered, the upcoming Director's Cut webinar will be in the evening instead of this afternoon. 
Okay, so hopefully see all you guys on there, and it'll be a much bigger party. I want to thank you all for being here today. And let's see. Oh, yeah. Yes, leave the link for the question. Yeah. The link the yeah. question. Uh, Heidi, it's not fully, I, I don't fully comprehend it, but I'm really working on that one. <laughs> and that's pretty exciting stuff. I just, first and foremost, I just want that to be on your radar because there's some pretty cool changes coming up with that stuff. We're going to drop the, the link in here for a second. Yeah, I dropped it to everybody. Okay. You guys all get the load up on those questions. We're going to hammer through them next week. I want to thank each and every one of you. We will be here in the evening next Tuesday. Look forward to Oh, by the way, any of you who threw out this call, I think there's three of you having a help desk and ticket issue, just go ahead and drop those to us, and somebody on our team will jump on those that having been delayed. And uh, thank you very much. We'll see you guys on the inside. Network Empire team signing off. Thanks, guys.